Hi there. That was pretty great. Um, I'm Danny Gregory, and this is Draw With Me. And what you just saw was the library that you created over the last week uh, in response to what we did on Draw With Me last week, which was just drawing a book that you like, a book that uh, maybe you read a lot or a book that you're currently reading. And it was just fantastic to see all those books and to see books that I knew and books that I didn't know. So that was really great. It was it was kind of like a like a book club or a recommendation list or one of those um, ten books you have to read sorts of things. So very cool, very nice. Thank you for sharing. Thanks for doing such a great job. I and mean, some of them were really amazing, really amazing. They all were actually. So um, hopefully you recognize some of them. Hopefully there were a couple that you were like, I have to go and check that out. So good. <sighs> You know, it's um, f for the first time so far, it feels kind of like winter here in Phoenix. It actually has been frosty the last couple of days, which is very weird. Makes Twiglet feel very strange about going outside. There's actually frost on the ground temporarily, then it disappears, but that is unusual. Maybe you have snow where you are. Um, it's kind of the time for it to start, right? Not here in Phoenix, though. Normally, it's not frosty, so that was pretty cool. Um, good. Well, thank you all for joining me today. Today, we are going to make money. So, yeah, that'll be pretty exciting. That will be pretty fun. So, get out your gear. Make sure you've got stuff to draw with, uh, stuff to paint with. I plan to actually do some watercoloring today. And um, we are going to have some fun trying some experimental stuff. I'm going to try some stuff I haven't really done before using a few tools I haven't done before. So, yeah. Desiree says it's, it's 60 degrees in, the, in Indiana. I noticed that it's actually warmer in New York City than it is in Phoenix. So, I don't know. The world is crazy, as we all already know. That's not news. So... Um, what I want to talk about today was, uh, I want to start with a, a note of inspiration, an artist who you may or may not have ever heard of, um, and he is, he's dead now, actually, he died a couple years ago, but his name is essentially, well, he's had various names, but I think he's kind of known to his friends as Bob Robert Boggs, Bob Boggs. So one day, Bob Boggs went into a diner, was having a cup of coffee. He's an artist, and he started just kind of doodling, doodling on his napkin, and he drew a one, a number one. He was kind of embellishing it, kept drawing it, and then it eventually led him to drawing a dollar bill. And there it is on the napkin, a, a dollar bill, and the waitress comes up, and she says, wow, that's really good, you made that? You're an artist? And he said, yeah. And she said, w would you sell it to me? And he said, no, but I'll tell you what, let me buy this cup of coffee using this drawing. So kind of a, an exchange, but he didn't have in mind that it was an exchange so much as he was actually buying a cup of coffee. And he said to her, the coffee was like 75 cents, let's say. So he said, I want you to um, if you're willing to do this, could you bring me a receipt and the change and you can keep the drawing of a dollar bill? And this was like a, a, his mind suddenly blew as he realized what he, what he was doing and what was interesting. About it. I want to show you a brief little video just uh, showing him. So what he started to do is he started to, he started to use money, drawings of money as collateral. And he wanted to explore the idea that that money, currency, money is something that actually doesn't really have inherent value until we decide that it does, just like art. That art, in a way, is only as valuable as we decide it's going to be. And similarly with money. Money is essentially little drawings, little pieces of paper, and, you know, what if we kind of dove into that and dissected it and said, what is it actually? 
what is this? It's really an agreement between us. So why couldn't we have agreements that, um, you know, pertain to other things? And, you know, there's a lot of discussion about that right now, uh, thanks to what technology is allowing us to do. And I, when we come back, I want to show you this video, and I'll talk a bit more about some thoughts I have around this idea. My name is J.S.G. Boggs. People call me Boggs. I create images that say things and ask things. Boggs makes art that looks like U.S. currency. He calls his masterpieces Boggs Bills, and his work is held in major museums like the Smithsonian and the Museum of Modern Art. Today, Boggs is going on one of his regular excursions to try and spend his bills in order to provoke questions like, what is money, and why does money have value? I take them out into the real world and try to spend them, not as counterfeits, but as works of art that ask us about the nature of money. Hey, how are you? Wondering if I could show you something. Um, what do you think of this? What do I think of it? Yeah. It's yeah. interesting. How what are you going to use it for? I'd like to spend this work of art with you for these works of art mm -hmm. and get uh, receiving change. I don't know. You have to ask my manager. I don't think she'd be very happy if she saw that in the register. Where is she? We do do some store credit for trade, but only on other clothing items. But we don't accept art as payment mm -hmm. because uh, we are a cash business. Portraits, mm -hmm. landscape, abstract, geometric. Uh, this is a work of art. <clears throat> so you yes. do, in fact, accept works of art, don't we you? We do, but the bank accepts this as rent, and they would not accept this. <laughs> The only thing that gives cash value is faith. We never think about the, the pixie dust that makes it all work. A dollar is only a dollar because I believe this thing has value, and yet it works. So this is the thing about the monetary system that is simultaneously horrifying and magnificent. So Boggs spent the next 20, 30 years, making art in this way, making drawings of art and using them in transactions. And some of them ended up being hundreds of thousands of dollars. Um, his art became valuable in and of itself, as art does, and it transcended that original um, transaction. But he's basically combining... Uh, the transaction itself is part of the artwork, right? So it's a drawing that is then exchanged for goods or actual money. And then there's paperwork that goes back and forth between it. And that whole thing, that whole transaction was the art piece. And um, you may have heard of a thing called NFTs, which is non-fungible tokens, which is, sounds technical, and it actually is. It's kind of mind-bogglingly technical. I don't fully understand it. But it's a big thing in the art world right now, which is basically that people are taking, creating digital works of art, and they are making them unique. Now, normally, we think of digital images and digital files as being something that you can infinitely replicate, right? You can make lots and lots of copies of something, and they're all identical to the original. So this new notion of NFTs allows using blockchain technology, again, I won't go into it too far, but basically it allows an individual digital piece of art to be unique and to be bought and sold. And it's now applying not just to pieces of art, and there have been a very basic piece of art, like a little animated GIF or um, uh, just uh, a tweet. There was a tweet recently that sold for something like $600,000 because again, it becomes unique. So it starts to strain, strain the whole notion that we have about what is art, what is money, uh, what is value, what is collectible. When you think of a, a collectible baseball card, again, it's something that there are lots of copies of, but each one becomes unique and valuable. So um, 
it's worth reading about. It is a very interesting idea, and it's something that's going to affect the way that artists can make a living, the way musicians and authors can make a living, because suddenly you can't bootleg everybody's work, and artists also will start to own the actual products that they make and be able to buy and sell them without other people being able to rip them off. It also means that an artist can make a one-to-one interaction with a customer, with a collector. If you're a musician, you can now actually make a one-to-one relationship with your audience and sell them individual copies of your music. And it also means that if an artist makes a piece of work that becomes an NFT and a collector buys it, the artist can work into the NFT that every time there's a transaction with that piece of art in the future, the artist will get paid. And that's a major boon for artists because a lot of times an artist could sell something in a gallery and then that thing could, in over time, take off and become incredibly valuable. You could have a, a work of art that's worth millions of dollars, but the artist never gets any of that money. But with an NFT, they can. They can get paid with every transaction. So, yeah. Have um, have a look at it. See if you can find out more about it because it is it is interesting. It is the, the near future. These are some of pieces of Boggs art. As you can see, they're close to, but not. They're not. Um, they're not. Uh, what's it called? They're not exact copies, right? They're not counterfeit. They are an impression of music of money, and despite that. He was um, arrested repeatedly for counterfeiting. Basically, the U.S. Treasury considered anybody who makes even a drawing of money to be a counterfeiter. Well, he fought that, and basically the, those regulations don't exist anymore now. You can't get arrested for doing a drawing of money, but it's kind of outrageous that that was ever the case. Um, and as you can see, like some of them are... Uh, really his own invention. In fact, that one that he showed in the video of Harriet Tubman was one that he had invented. He actually created that. If you remember, there was a discussion about Harriet Tubman being on the $100 bill. Well, he did this long before that, and he basically created his own piece of currency based on his own design. So that's what I was going to propose that we do today, is that we, we're not going to counterfeit money. We're going to make our own money. Let's see what that's like to create our own piece of art that feels like money, perhaps, maybe that uses some of the language of money, but is our own. And how are we going to do that? How are we going to use, how are we going to create something that has some of the purposes of money, right? And we're going to talk about and think about like what goes into a piece of currency, essentially a drawing, right? And American money is actually pretty boring. There's a lot of money around the world that's far more beautiful and colorful and more interestingly designed and is printed on interesting materials. American money is all pretty standard size. It's all basically green and black and a little bit of red. So if you want to go crazy and make something, you know, that is break some of those rules of money, by all means, let's do that. Um, and let's have some fun. All right, you with me? Money. Maybe this time of year we're all thinking about money, right? Holidays, people are spending money. Um, I'm going to be using a, a new product that I'm kind of excited about I've never used before, Hanamula's Toned Watercolor Book. So it is it is uh, watercolor paper, but it's toned. I've talked about the, the gray book before, but the gray book is um, just basically drawing paper, but this is actually, and it comes in two shades it comes in gray and in, and in tan this is gray so you can see it's can you tell this is not uh, let me get some white and show you what this is white you, you still can't tell the difference can you um it's, yeah so that's white and that's gray so it's a light gray but it's enough to give some tone to the page which is interesting interesting to play with and it means i might try using some white on it and see how that sounds. Oh, good. The leaf blowers are here. Um, 
All right. And also, yeah, I think it's also interesting to talk about, I have seen that book, The Art of Money. It is, uh, it is really interesting. It's about all of the different art, basically the art, the drawings, the engravings that go into making money. It's very interesting. Um, all right. So, yes, we're going to talk about also um, what's happening to money. I hardly ever use cash anymore. Maybe you don't either. Honestly, I pay with my watch a lot of the time. That's kind of where money is going. But let's, let's try and make some money. I was kind of thinking that I might use this for my money. I might use that idea, of that drawing, um, which is the, the draw with me guy. The guy, that guy's me. So I might make him into the sort of um, George Washington portrait on the front of my bill. Once I fix my pencil. Yeah, I'm going to be using watercolor, and I'm, I'm kind of into combining pencil lines with watercolor. Thank you. It's not a watercolor pencil, of course, but a regular pencil is kind of nice to draw. Oh my god, I lost my tip again. I'm going to have to switch pencils. Um, so yeah, so I'm going to just draw my my hero here, and I don't mean that he's a hero. I mean that he's the hero of the of the bill. But you can do, you know. So this is going to be my money, so therefore it has a picture of me on it. But you can decide to do whatever you want to do with your money, and you can uh, you can put whoever's portrait you want to put on it. You could put a portrait of somebody who you think should be on money, who should be on money, maybe. Maybe it's somebody who should be commemorated or somebody who we should be reminded of every time we go to spend money, you know? But yeah, this is, I'm just, I'm just issuing my own f money. So therefore, it's got me or this version of me on it. Um... And these lines can kind of function like a, an engraving might. And then, you know, I'll put them into a thing like that. One of those sort of little frames. But I'm going to put a, on the top, I'm going to put something. Maybe I'll put my initials. So that's going to be my centerpiece, and then I'm going to let me sort of indicate what the whole size of the bill is going to be. Like that. And I'm going to call this a dollar. This will be a dollar. But maybe I should come up because maybe it's because it's my own currency. I could call it something else. Um, I'll call it a Danny. One Danny. This is one. No, I'm going to call it a dollar. I'm, I'm afraid of. <laughs> my own name on currency just seems like real hubris to be going that far. What else? And then, um, you know, I put a nice number up here.
Extend that a bit. Mm-hmm. And... Now I'm going to start getting into making little patterns and embellishments. Because you've got to have all those things that mean, that make it unique, right? That make it uh, into something that looks official. Right, but I really want to take advantage of the fact that I'm using watercolor paper here. So I'm going to start getting out some watercolor stuff. And um, maybe I should think about using, doing patterns. I'm going to, I think I'm going to keep my palette pretty limited. So this is going to be basically like grays and blues. Because... That will kind of hold it together, I think. All right. Excuse that noise of the leaf blowers. I apologize. There's nothing I can do about it. It is, there's a lot of leaves out here, so they are, they're going to be busy today. It's incredibly annoying, and there's, (laughs) I apologize. So it'll be over in a minute. So bear with me, please. I'm going to make an eye. There are eyes on dollar bills, but in my case, because, you know, I'm an artiste and eyes are my business, I think I'm going to put some eyes here. The all-knowing eye. And I'm kind of drawing with watercolor, so I think I'm going to do a bit more sort of just adding some tone to this. Just, uh, because that's really one of the benefits of watercolor, is you can add some tone. I kind of like not having that bright white paper. It's nice to have something that's a bit, a bit more subdued. You know, normally when you're doing watercolor, the the way you add white is by having some of the paper show through. But in this case, maybe I could use some gouache uh, to make it more varied. Um, I 
go. Add a bit of tone. See, I, that's the nice thing about the pencils. I can go right over it. Don't have to worry about it affecting the line. The line's going to stay nice and sharp. But I could also take some watercolor. I could take some watercolor pencil here. This is uh, a Winsor Newton watercolor pencil. And I can do some stuff that is it's going to be different because I can dip it right into the water. And so the water so it takes on this kind of fuzzy nature if I wanted it to. It also makes, when you dip a watercolor pencil in water, it makes for a certain kind of intensity that I think is pretty cool. But a lot of about making currency, I think, is really about making all these just different kinds of textures that are going to be, you know, things that make it feel like you can't just reproduce it. Like not anybody could just go out and draw one of these Danny dollars. So this one is crying. So maybe that's what it's about. It's about crying crying because I only have a dollar. All right, so see what that's going on. It's getting away from me a bit. So let's take control once more. Um, with some more pencils. So one thing that I have to, oh, I have to put a serial number. Maybe in fact I'll use this pen. some kind of incomprehensible um, number. And then on this side, I'm going to put my signature. Because you always have a signature on a bill. What are other conventions of money? Um, well, I didn't put a country on it, but I'm not going to put a country. This is not currency. This is, in, this is global currency. So it is not tied to any particular uh, nation, let's say. So that's the one thing that is missing, I guess. But it's not missing because I forgot it, although I did. It's missing because I choose to be uh, making money for the whole world. International internet currency. Um, what else should we put on this dollar? Maybe I should put a, a, a leaf blower. Maybe I'll put a couple. Uh, I'll put a leaf just as a commemoration of this experience. There's a leaf blowing, and. Um, Maybe this should be draw with me money. I hadn't thought about that. Maybe, or maybe it just says, maybe it just say in Latin. How would you say draw with me in Latin? Um, I will make it up. Speak Latin, maybe you could tell me if this is correct or not, but I'm pretending that it is me cum designare. No idea what that, whether that's correct or not. Um, and then I'm going to put down Phoenix, Arizona here, because that's where I am currently sitting as I draw this. Um, all right, that's, that'll be my dollar. Now I could make this into an NFT, 
and I could sell it for maybe, I don't know, a dollar. But then every time somebody sells it, I could make another penny. But then would I still have the original? No, I wouldn't because it would have to be unique. But it would be digital, so I would have the, this piece of art. All right. Let me get rid of my guy here. And uh, have a cup of coffee. All right. Oh, actually, Fran had suggested some Latin, so good. Trahere mecum. Oh, trahere. All right, well, maybe this is in pig Latin, and I need to have... I need to have the official Fran. Did you say trahere mecum? Yeah. Trahere mecum. I like that. So I wasn't too far off. Um, all right. It's got a lot of a fair number of colors in it, but you know, I think should I go and try and buy something uh, here at the mall in Phoenix with this? Maybe I will. I could get arrested though. That's certainly what happened to Mr. Boggs. Oh, I know. I want to try some white. I want to try some white here. Can you see it? You probably can't see it on the camera. I can see it in person. Yeah, let me use a gel pen. See how that works. Yeah, it actually shows up better on camera than it does in person. That's good. Now maybe I need just a white line around it. Yeah, I think I want to try, I'm going to see if I can get the tan one, the tan um, version of this paper. That sounds maybe more useful than the gray to me. You could do stuff in sepia. Right, there it is. One Danny dollar. It's a little crude. But it's my first dollar. You know, I should cut it out and put it up on the wall, you know, like they do in stores, you know, the very first dollar they ever made. So. I've, I have actually done drawings of of actual dollars before, but I've never actually created a dollar. So that'll have to do. Um, it looks like Pharaoh's headdress. Yes, it kind of does. I was imagining it being sort of like ra the sun radiating from my head, but uh, maybe that's what Pharaoh had in mind too. So... The name of this book? That's what you mean, this drawing book? Yeah, this is... This is toned water, a toned watercolor book from Hanamula. They have them at Blick. This particular one is 60 pages, and it's A5. So, you know, it's a, it's a nice size. This is a great size, I think, for a, for a journal. I like this size, so... Uh, if that's what you were asking about. Or oh, the Virgin, <laughs> the Virgin of Guadalupe. You know, I've been called a lot of things in my time, but that's a first. 
All right, so that's that is that is that project. That's my project for today. Um, should we talk about something else? What else should we talk about? Why don't we talk about? Um, I'll show you a sketchbook. I'll do my sketchbook tour. Right? This is my sketchbook tour. I'm gonna do a sketchbook. It's not the sketchbook though. It's gonna be a different one. And you know what? To be fair, because I sometimes get in trouble for doing too much spending too much time talking and blathering. So therefore, I'm going to set a timer. So this is, we do every week, we do a sketchbook tour, and it is um, it is sponsored by Windsor & Newton, so it's, this one is too. Let me just adjust my camera, and I, we have four minutes to go through this. So this is a sketchbook that I did in Jerusalem, and uh, this is kind of just stuff I pasted on the cover. A little ephemera that I picked up, uh, Jerusalem, a few years ago. Visiting, my grandfather was living in Jerusalem. He lived to be 98, and he, uh, this is a drawing I did of him, sitting there with his walker. He was 94 at that point. And here we have, these, these are the walls that are, surround the old city, Jerusalem. St ancient stone walls and various abbeys. I wrote some stuff in Arabic there as well. This is what it looks like going into the old city. Yeah, this is a drawing I was doing of this minaret. Here, let me just read you what I wrote. While I draw this minaret, an old man comes over to tell me that this mosque was a church about a thousand years ago, but was seized by the Muslims. He was joined by two thick teenagers who kept asking what I was drawing and then repeatedly saying, how many? But I'm not sure to what they referred. Two younger boys appeared and started smashing and re-smashing a mirror. And then they joined the throng and started to insist that I draw them. Then they asked me to give them this drawing and then they tried to snatch the book and run away with it. I glared at them quite firmly and started to leave. One of the boys dogged me for a couple of blocks and I finally lost him, clutching my backpack like a Nelly. Yes. All right, so here we are going into the Damascus Gate. And here is um, some of our cousins dropped by for tea and we had these special biscuits, cinnamon rolls and the like. Here's some sugar smacks, the Israeli version of sugar smacks, just part of the inexorable march of globalism, I suppose. And here's another view of these walls. And then there's also this wall that, that um, has been built. to. It's called the Geder, which divides the Palestinian area from the rest of uh, the old city. A source of much conflict. Here we see... Um, some olive trees on Mount Olives, which is near where my grandmother is buried. And actually, my grandfather, too. They're both buried there now. They're, my grandfather was alive at this point. But these are these ancient olive trees, really beautiful. And this is the convent at the end of their street. I've never seen anybody come out of it, I write. And um, here's some more people in a cafe talking about politics. Politics, politics. This is an old phone that was in my grandfather's house. And here I am on the plane flying back, and I wrote, somewhere over Limoges, my pen explodes. Sad. Various security badges. And then a little bit more of collage here at the end. So there you go. And then it's part of the map. These are just kind of things that I found, like, in the street. This is some thing about a coffin with some Arabic writing on it. Don't even know what it was. So, yeah, that is volume 33 of my travel sketchbook. And, uh, hey, I managed to fit it in in three, four minutes, three or four minutes. See? I forget how many time, how much time I spent on it. So, yeah. So that is... This week's sketchbook of the week, I'm, I showed you one of my sketchbooks last week. Usually I show other people's sketchbooks, but I showed 
mine last week. You seem to like it. So I thought maybe for a few weeks uh, until I gather some new ones from other folks, I'll just show you some of mine. I've got a lot of them. And uh, if you know, if you find it interesting, let's do it. So yeah, so that that is a travel sketchbook. I think it's great. Um, as uh, JF says here, so much more uh, says so much more than thousands of photos. It's true. You go on a vacation, snap, 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 snap. You come back, you have all these pictures. But this is an opportunity to be more present, not to just kind of gloss through things through as you do when you take pictures, but to sit and draw and to write about your experience and uh, have a have a really. I think add a lot more value to your expensive vacation by turning it into an art project. And I love to do that. In fact, I did a whole book about it called An Illustrated Journey, which is all about the various ways that people do travel journals. And I think it is, I think of all the kinds of sketchbook journaling we can do, it's probably the most addictive one. It's the one that people really fall into. Because you can say to yourself, like, well, my... Everyday life is boring. There's nothing really to draw about. But when you're on vacation, everything is interesting. Everything, not just the famous sites, but also, you know, the cinnamon rolls and the sugar smacks. Everything is different, unusual, notable. So you note it down in your sketchbook. Draw a little, do a little drawing, do a little watercolor, take a few notes, pass some illegal currency, whatever you want to do. It is a great way to travel and to see the world and really see it. So, okay, um, what else? Edza, my first time drawing along. Icelandic 100 kroner bill. I like that. Are you, it sounds like you have a Dutch name, but are you in Iceland? Iceland? That would be even more interesting. I don't know if we've had people from Iceland before. We've had, we've had Dutch people. You're kind of old hat, but that's cool. Um, Volume 33, I'm sorry to tell you, but that volume 33 is from 20 years ago, 18 years ago. So I've kind of, I'm beyond volume 33 at this point. <laughs> um, Samantha convinced her 60-year-old dad, your dad sounds really old. You think he's, are you sure he's not too old to draw? Maybe too old to start something new? 60 years old, oh my God. But he's starting a sketchbook, thank you. I'm glad, I'm happy for him. I hope that the remaining few years of his life are filled with art. Is it hot or cold press? Um, this is, it is cold press, but it's not very heavily textured. If you're asking me about that um, toned watercolor paper, yes. It is, it is, yeah, it doesn't say, does it, is it? It says gently toned watercolor paper an even fine-grained surface structure on both sides providing a natural background for your artwork. Available in gray or beige. Um, what else? Just looking at what is what comments you've made. All right, well, um, I don't think I've missed anything terribly important that you said. But uh, Dutch and living in Iceland. Fantastic. I almost took my wife on vacation to Iceland, but it fell apart at the last minute. But I think it's a, it seems like the most amazing place and uh, beautiful. In fact, she's reading a book about Icelandic museums, specifically about a whale museum. It was one of my Christmas presents, or Hanukkah presents, actually. Um, all right. Buttercrafts has run out of ideas already. You've already run out of ideas? We've only been doing this for 45 minutes. You can keep thinking. I'm sure tomorrow, I'm sure you'll wake up in the middle of the night with all kinds of ideas. Look at money. I mean, money, it's just a fascinating visual graphic language. It has all these conventions in it uh, about how you make these designs. Do I have a Udemy or Teachable class? No, I have an entire art school. It's called Sketchbook School. So, yes, you can go to sketchbookschool.com. That's funny that you uh, asked me that. It's not really funny. I'm glad that you asked me that. But also, I have uh, I write a weekly essay, dannysessays.com. You can subscribe to it. And then, I, you know, I'm, I'm writing a lot these days. I'm really enjoying writing. 
it is probably the thing I'm enjoying doing the most right now. What makes a good starter watercolor kit for a new artist? Paint, brand, and brush types. All good questions. All good questions. I'm not going to answer them today specifically, but I would just say try something and figure it out. You can't really go wrong. Watercolor is a fascinating medium. Generally, I would say buy stuff that makes you feel so that it's slightly uncomfortably expensive. Because if you buy something that's cheap, the color will not be great. So um, I love Winsor & Newton watercolors. So I would just say buy yourself a Win Winsor & Newton field kit and get yourself a brush or two and start doing it. See how you feel. A good watercolor set will last you for years. So I would do, I would try that. All right. Thank you all for, um, for being here today. And, um, I'll see you again next Thursday. Thanks for drawing with me today. We'd love to see what you made. So please post it on social media or put it in the Sketchbook School schoolyard and make sure to tag it, hashtag SBS Draw With Me. Thanks very much to our sponsors, Hanamula and Windsor and & Newton. And if you'd like some more inspiration for your creativity, here are three things that you can do. One, subscribe to this channel and you'll know when I make new videos, which I do every week. Two, sign up for my free weekly newsletter. A lot of people seem to like it, maybe because it's free. And third, watch another video.